Hi, it's Rob from Brush and Balcon. Today I'm going to be painting up one of the bases from the Easy to Build Stormcast Eternals Castigators set, which came with the Mortal Realms last month. First colour we're using tonight is Mechanicus Standard Grey. I'm going to be using that to paint the gravestone section, which is on top of the slabs of stone. Obviously, this is just one method of painting up these scenic bases. I'm trying to do the ones from the Mortal Realms. So you've got the Night Horns, which have got the graveyard kind of stuff on. You've also got some of the Stormcast Eternals with almost graveyard and stonework on them. So we're going to be trying to paint these up in a similar kind of fashion, but ever so slightly different. Now, the next colour that we're going to use is Dawnstone. Now you can see here, I've actually added it already because the camera didn't start filming, I must have mispressed the button. But if you just apply the Dawnstone when it goes on, it does tend to be quite thin anyway. So it does streak a little bit going over the gold because this has been sprayed with Citadel Retributor armor. So actually showing this part shows you what the Dawnstone is like when it's smooth without streaks, like so. Now we're going to be using Citadel Rhinox Hide. We're going to be using this to do the soil around the edge of the base. Now it's a very, very quick and easy paint job to do this, but it does look good once you've finished it. Now what we'll be doing is doing a similar kind of post to this over on the blog. I'll be showing the bases to the Stormcast easy to build sequiters because I did the bases to them a slightly different stone colour but I think there is a tutorial on how to do that on the blog so I'll link those up. Now we're going to paint all the bones on this and we're going to be using Citadel Rakarth Flesh. I do like this as a base for the bone. When you're building up the layers you're just using a little bit of white, a little bit of shabti bone those three layers you can get it looking pretty decent. You'll see that towards the end of the video. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Nurgling Green. We're going to start painting up the leaves here, so there's going to be a few shorter sections of film showing the different colours I'm using. The Nurgling Green, I'm just using as a general slightly faded leaf colour. Now we're going to move on to Vallejo German Cam Bright Green. If you've got a similar Citadel colour, by all means use it, or an army painter colour, as long as it's a bit more of a deeper green, we're going to be using this as the kind of standard leaf colour, so where you've put the Nurgling green on, and you want that looking as though it's faded, like the leaves have fallen from the trees, they've started to break down a bit, you're just going to add a little bit of this green onto some of the leaves as though they're freshly fallen, and onto certain parts of the other leaves to make it look like the colour has faded, going into the Nurgling green. Now when you first paint these up and you've got a few different colours, it does look quite jarring because there's the different colours next to each other, but once you shade them it looks fine. Squig Orange is next from Citadel. I'm just going to paint up a few of these leaves. These are the ones that have been lying on the floor for a little bit longer. And so that Nurgling Green is going to be kind of fading into the orange there. As I say, it does look quite jarring when you paint the colours together. But once you've added the shade, it kind of blends that in a little bit, makes it less jar, and it just makes it look like it's a pile of leaves that have been on the floor at different lengths of time, starting to rot a little bit. Next leaf colour, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Beige Brown. Just going to paint a few little bits onto the orange. And the reason we're putting a little bit on the orange here is so that you can then use the orange to beige brown to a slightly darker brown just to give that really 
rotten leaf kind of look to it. Now I have just added a little bit of Nurgling Green there, just because there's a, a bit that was missing paint. So now I'm going to use Citadel Mournfang Brown. I'm just going to add some of the edges to these leaves and little bits on the orange leaves as though the leaf is browning. If you look at a leaf pile in autumn you tend to get a whole heap of different coloured leaves and that's the kind of rough effect that we're going for here. So the first shade we're using is Citadel Nuln Oil. I'm going to be using this on all the stone on the Rhinox side. You want to give that a nice layer so you get it in all the creases and all the recesses. So you want them to stand out when we start reapplying all of the colours shortly. Now the secret of blog post which I mentioned earlier that does have a different coloured stone. I think it might have been the calf flesh initially. Going on to Citadel Seraphim Sepia that we're just going to be using for the bones. Yeah, so the stone's more of a Rakarth flesh, a sepia wash, and then built up with just Rakarth flesh, and then mixes of Rakarth flesh and white. So it does give you a nice, kind of beigey, kind of coloured rock stone effect. So if you're not into the grey stone, you can go for the kind of beige stone. Now I'm going to be using a little bit of Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm going to use this on some of the orange leaves. I will be using different coloured shades, sometimes over the same leaves you've just painted. So do let the layers dry before you start adding the next shade on the leaves. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Athonian Camo Shade. I'm going to spread this quite liberally across all the leaves. Now we haven't finished with the shades, once we've finished doing the main base, once we've painted it all up again we'll then be weathering the base using the shades again. Now we're going to be using Mechanica's Standard Grey and we're going to start building up the stone colour on the top of this gravestone. As I say, this is a very quick and easy method of doing these. You can do them in batches because they all have similar kind of things on them. Some of them have got slightly different details, but you can pick those details out when you've painted the rest of the bases. But you can batch paint them quite well. Now, going on to Citadel Dawnstone again. I have failed to show the paint. But Dawnstone is the grey that you use to paint this stone initially. You can see on that gravestone section itself the difference that the shade makes from when it was just the base colours. As always when you're reapplying these colours just make sure that you leave the shades in the recesses just so you get that nice bit of definition between the slabs. Okay so we're going to add a little bit of white to the Dawnstone. I'm using Vallejo white there. And this is just to create a slightly lighter shade. Now, if you've already got one premixed, that's fine. You can just use that one. But I just wanted to use something a little bit different. Did try uh, Vallejo German Grey, but that was slightly too close to Dawnstone, so you couldn't really see that too well. So I figured I'd just add a little bit of white to the Dawnstone, and we can highlight it with that. Now I'm going to try a different method of shade, and when I start doing the base for the night haunts just because I'd like them to be similar but slightly different. Now we're just using pure white here, using Vallejo white again, and this is just to do a few little edge highlights on each of the blocks of stone. I'm using a really really old Citadel medium layer brush here just to kind of 
lightly dry brush and wet brush that onto the very edges. That just makes each slab stand out. Now I'm going to start working on the gravestone now. So we're going to use Citadel Dawnstone and start doing the highlights on that. Now I could have done this with the earlier section when I was painting the Dawnstone back onto the slabs, but I wanted to try and break it up into the separate sections. So you're working on the lighter stone first, then you're working on the darker stone, then the bone or whatever it is next. And once more, we're just going to use some Vallejo white just to paint up the edges of all the blocks of stone. And highlight this gravestone piece on top. Now, it's quite a light highlight for this, but it does work well in bringing out all the details on it. As always, if you get too much of the highlight on a certain area, you can just use one of the previous colours and paint over it and then reapply it. That's not a problem. If you want to do any of the verticals, using a thinner brush and highlight those with that, that's fine too. So now that we've finished those, we're going to start using Citadel Rhinoxide to reapply the colour to the muddy area around the edge of the base. Now it doesn't really seem matter too much about this if you're applying it as a kind of wet brush like I am here. You are going to get some of it into the recesses. That doesn't matter too much as long as you've still got some of the recesses there with the null oil in there, that'll be fine. It doesn't matter if you don't get every one of the ridges on it, because we'll be coming back and highlighting that with a lighter brown. But as long as you get quite a bit of rhinoxide back on there and leave some of the null oil in the recess, that'll be fine. For the first highlight, we're going to use Citadel Mornfang Brown. I'm just going to lightly dry brush this onto all the areas. You mainly want to be getting this onto the raised areas on the mud. So try your best not to fill in any of the recesses with it. Now we're moving on to painting the bones now. So we're going to go back to Citadel Ricard Flesh and you want to paint a good part of the bones with this. You want to leave some of the seraphim sepia in the recesses so that you get those shaded areas on them and a the little darker bits. But generally you just want to be doing all the smoother surfaces. Like so. Now we're going to mix some Citadel Ushabti bone into the Rakarth flesh and apply the first layer of highlights. I don't know, that's slightly out of focus there. It seems to have focused on my finger in the background instead. But you can still get the idea of what I'm doing. Now we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo White to that previous mix, just to do one final highlight, and we're just going to use this to do a few little highlights along the length of each bone, around the tips of them, and parts of the skull just to bring out the details in that. Like so. Now you can see the base here with all the colours reapplied. So the stone stands out quite a lot there compared to the mud. 
the leaves stand out on the stone quite a bit. So what we're going to start doing now is adding a little bit of weathering with some of the shade colours. The first one that we're going to use is Sithil Agrax Earth Shade. All you're going to do is around the edges of all the soil where it's on a stone, you're going to apply some of this. So that it seeps into that recess there and you get a thinner amount on the stone itself and a darker amount around the edge of the soil. And this gives it a kind of look like there's a bit of dirty liquid maybe seeping out of the soil and onto the stonework. You also want to go around the base of each layer of stonework and add a little bit of a grax earth shade to that as well, just as though dirt has gathered in all those little recesses and maybe splashed up when it's been raining. And also you want to go around each of the piles of leaves with a little bit of a grax earth shade too, so as they're breaking down it's dirty in the area around them. And the final colour we're going to use on this is Citadel Lithonian Camo Shade. We're going to do almost similar to what we did with the Grax Earth Shade. Although we're just going to add a little bit of this to green up some of the bones as though they're a bit damp. And then you're also going to do lower down on the brickwork so that you've got a Grax Earth Shade showing over the top. And then you also want to go around the leaves as well like you did previously. Just to add that little bit of greenness to them. And make it look like they are breaking down and rotting. And that's the end. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media, link below. Thanks very much.